in your video yes what's the percentage what would you say is the percentage stock footage and uh captured footage it's about 90 percent it's about 90 percent, and that's a vast difference from any other project that i've done welcome to the call-in a unique show where we get to interview creators from across zimbabwe and get to find out about how they do some of their work and projects Today we've got Alban Manjengwa, a filmmaker and editor based in Harare. Welcome Alban. Hi, it is my pleasure to be here. Nice to have you with us, man. So Alban, take us, awesome. tell us a little bit about you and your company, Blue Canary. Uh, okay, it's the two of us in the firm, my wife and I, and I'm the one who's in production. And our core business is content creation for the purposes of marketing. So essentially, you could define us as a digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. So we create content in the form of video. We do voiceover recordings. We create uh, press ads as well, as well as online um, ads that are stationary. Don't know what you call those. So during lockdown, it's hard for creatives to interact with clients and to create content for them. How have you overcome this challenge? As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. So, you know, those difficult times have really forced me to think and explore ways that ordinarily uh, we wouldn't have um, utilized. For instance, with um, a part of this production that we're going to be talking about, we had to use barter, uh, barter trading to pay for the voiceover that was done for this because we weren't able to send or to give actual cash, for instance. So that, among other things, like digging into uh, our bank of footage that we've used before for other projects and then um, wherever we need permission or licensing from, um, those clients to say that okay we need to use this clip uh, for this particular project and we're asking because we really don't have the capacity right now to go out and film anything without getting in trouble so it's really knocking on those proverbial doors so we're speaking about the project okay. uh, that you recently did an advert um, which incorporates a lot of elements that you'd, re you'd usually go out and film so how did you, can you show us how you made your advert or the, your process? So the client reached out to us and said, listen, um, we are going to be working from home, although our office is closed. So we need our audience to understand that, that we, we are still reachable. And despite everything that is going on, we're there for them. So in order to best convey that, I then decided to pen a script that we did a back and forth with them and once we agreed upon a script because apart from editing i also produce and direct but since the faculty of directing wasn't yet it made the job a little bit easier i penned the script we did a back and forth we agreed upon it and then from the script that's where we then determined the elements that would go in the project as well as the feel of the the music and the emotion that we want to convey so the next challenge that we had was to get the voiceover done i normally do voiceovers but my voice would have been unsuitable for this particular project so i reached out to a friend of mine napoleon who is a professional voiceover artist because we couldn't pay him in actual dollars or eco cash uh, we then agreed on a barter arrangement where we did some work for him uh, in exchange for uh, this particular job in two days the voice came i edited it put the voice on a sound bed and it was sounding like it was making sense your place at the front line is at home with your family that's the best way to make sure they remain safe in the midst of a crisis there is much uncertainty so once we, once, once we connected the soundtrack to the voiceover, we had a proper feel of what it should look like. And together with the script, we began looking for footage 
which brought us to the next challenge, which was the fact that we couldn't film stuff. So first off, we looked for stock footage, royalty free stock footage. Now, it was important that we had to find royalty free stock footage because this was a low cost production and it had to be out pretty quick. We literally had just under a week to get this done. So then also because it's quite difficult to buy stuff online in it's possible in Zim, but it, it it's not that easy. So having found the stock footage that we wanted, we did comparisons as to which clips would work best and wherever there were gaps within the timeline or wherever the stock footage wasn't working properly, we would dig into our own banks of stuff that we had shot for other clients. So we reached out to them and asked if it would be okay to reuse some of those. And they agreed to it. Um, also because it wasn't really that much in terms of the, the whole advert is I'd say about one minute. So it wasn't really that extensive as well. So there's something that you just mentioned about stock footage and there's usually a debate whether to use stock footage for adverts and for commercial clients um, versus actually going out to shoot. Um, what's the pros and cons of using stock footage? There are a lot of pros and cons with using stock footage, particularly if your client and your audience are within Zimbabwe or within Africa. And this is because with stock photos and videos, for instance, um, the first thing that you're going to look at is generally the race of people that you will find. Uh, it's difficult to find quality stock footage with black people. Uh, which is the predominant race that you'll find uh, in, 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 in the Zimbabwean or in the Southern African context. The other issue with that, uh, with stock footage is it has this feel where, it, I, I can't really put it in actual terms, but it, it just feels stocky. It feels like, you know what, you can tell someone pulled that off the internet and yeah, it, so, it feels the generic. Problem with, pardon? It, it, like it feels generic. Exactly. It feels generic. And the problem with that is your audience is not going to be able to relate, depending, of course, on how you use it. Now, bearing that in mind, we then looked for things that we would obviously then find in Zimbabwe for this particular project. For instance, the overhead shot of the combine harvester, it's easy to get that as drone footage here in Zim. There are a bunch of people with combine harvesters growing soya in Chinui or, you know, wherever the case may be. Um, the other bit was the huge satellite. It's not the exact replica of the one that we have in Mazoe, but we have something that is pretty similar. And that is an okay generic thing to use it's it's not necessarily area specific way you can tell that it's a landmark for uh somewhere in texas or somewhere in paris because i can see the arc de triumph in the background or you know something like that so those are some of the challenges with stock footage the generic feel to it as well as um finding people of the correct ethnicity so, uh, so take us through your editing process. All right. So this was my timeline. And this is where we started with the voiceover. Now, because where my friend was, he didn't have access to a voiceover booth. So we had to pull the old, you know, take your phone out and go sit in the car, wait for all the cars to pass by. And within that one minute, squeeze in as much as you can. We did that within a couple of days we had the voiceover but it wasn't perfect because of that because you'd imagine there's still going to be um a few rough noises here and there because it's not a studio environment nonetheless we got it done and we cleaned it out to the best of our abilities and we added we added the voice of the, um, the soundtrack beneath came to the bit about the footage 
and I'll talk you through some of the clips that we had and then later on we'll go over the the text layers as well as some of the the graphics that we added in towards the end now this first clip here is not stock footage it's footage from a project that we handled about a year ago and this is one of the clips that we had to request permission from 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 our clients and they said cool it is good to go this next clip believe it or not is a hundred percent stock footage royalty free so out of curiosity which which perfect. sites did you go to to get some of these royalty free so if you visit pixels.com pixels.com has got both photo and video they have got some great photos on 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 their site and they do not look at all like stock footage um and i guess also because it's not the one artist and they do not have the one standard to say that if you're going to submit photos like this or footage like this it must look a certain way it's a whole bunch of freelancers from all over the world who've got different styles of photography and they come from different ethnicities and different eyes for creativity who post their stuff online in order to gain exposure so the best thing the best way of then really paying for that would be to credit them in whatever work would be done. And we, we use a lot of their stuff in other social media work that we do, which is uh, outside of video. So for instance, this clip that we got is from pixels.com and we just searched for black people hospital. And we got some really good clips because if you travel even to Bindura or uh, Chinoy District Hospital, you will find an environment like this with nurses dressed like this and doing their scrubbing like that. I think that's what they call it when they're washing. Okay. The, ne the next clip is, um, oh, that's from the hospital. So this is the combine harvester clip that I was referring to. This is from Pexels as well, but I loved this for two reasons. It looks um generic enough to be something shot in zimbabwe because we've got a lot of uh drone footage of farms in zim but this one compared to those other clips that we have this one worked best because of just the gray background and, and the dust and it was just a really good feel but this is from pixels.com as well as this big satellite this is not in mazoe mind you but yeah one would think that it is in your video yes what's the percentage what would you say is the percentage stock footage and uh captured footage it's about 90 percent it's about 90 percent, and that's a vast difference from any other project that i've done um i think i'd say stock footage used in a lot of the other projects that i've worked on in in the context of ads or commercials would be anything between zero and one percent right but with this one it pretty much the majority of it is stock footage yeah uh that's including this sunrise it's a beautiful sunrise which is actually a sunset in reverse so you had some uh, uh editing triggery right there <laughs> I should have said spoiler alert at the beginning of this video. So when we sent the first draft of, 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 of the video, the client was really happy. They were quite ecstatic. And a lot of what was missing was brand presence. So they decided to send us a couple of photos of uh, what they do. It's, it's a property development company, a, a real estate agency as well. And they sent us a few photos of one of the properties, one of the many properties that they're developing. Awesome work, I'll tell you that. And I could only really use two shots from the photos that I got. It would have been great to have video, but photos is all that we could get. And they worked well enough. While we're on that, when it comes to making video, a lot of people do not mind working with photographs. For me, it's a big deal because photos kind of put you in a box as to what it is you can do. And they often give off this vibe of a PowerPoint. And I 
the worst thing that you can be told as an editor or as a producer is to be told that yeah but this part of your video looks like a powerpoint anyone can do that you know so one way of getting around that is when you put up your photo just don't plonk it in as a stationary thing and look out for your transitions between you know because a lot of people use transitions where there's no need for transitions where a clip can literally go from one to the other but in this case i just added a bit of uh, motion a basic motion of zooming in without any transitions between the sunset and the two photos and then bringing the video to a close People take this for granted. Text is a very important element in any production. And if your text is boring, if your typeface is off, if it does not look professional, or if it does not complement the vibe that you're um, looking to communicate, it's, it's going to be jarring and it's not going to look nice. And it's, 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 it's one of the little elements that will cause your end product not to look professional. So what I did for the text um, in, 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 in the context of the content for the text was really take sound bites from the voiceover and then type them out. I didn't trans transcribe the whole thing. It was just copy and paste of some bits of it. And a lot of the times it's, it doesn't necessarily need to be verbatim, but just that highlight uh, that it's closely related to what is being said and the reason why you want to do this a lot of the times is at times your video is going to be playing on a phone right in a noisy environment or someone is going to get it on their feed or on their timeline and they cannot put on earphones or headphones at the moment but whatever is there uh, in terms of text is telling the same story minus the sound and you still get the gist of it so this is what the ad looked like. I'll just scrub through quickly. This is what the ad looked like with the text to give a little more context. And then the final thing that we had to do, because it's an ad, because at the end of the day, you have to communicate the client's brand. We included the logo as a watermark at the top right and the bottom left of the screen so all in all this is what it looks like this is the portion that had the slug come on that i was referring to and towards the end the sign out now just a quick one on that because we were also using a uh, stock audio we didn't have control over the timing of you know how it sounds like at the beginning and at the end so with me a lot of what i do is i will listen to the entire track a couple of times and listen out for the bits that have got the most punch that could you know um really yeah, that's that the point good, to say the least yeah, yeah. And, and then and it's important it's that it starts right and it finishes right because if it starts wrong it sounds like something that's just coming out of nowhere right because the audio is going to be governed by the length of the video itself and not vice versa there oftentimes is less control of, of, of uh, because you're not composing it or because it's not a custom composition from someone else there's less control over what it would sound like at the end unless you really listen to it and then cut it yourself that was the process a very short video one week to produce from start to finish and i loved the end product i honestly didn't think that i was going to love it as much as the other work that i did the other work that i shot personally but i think this is one of my favorite projects because of the amount of constraints that we had to overcome because the quality of the video at the end of it was a lot better than all of us imagined and because um, the client even um, ended up having it lighted on the national broadcaster because we thought it was that good. Wow, that's that's fantastic and congratulations to you. Um, Thank you. It's been it was such a pleasure having you on the show and for you to show us your experience as well as how you went through your process. Thank you for having me. 
And um, where can people find you if they want to find you online? Okay, so the best place to find us online would be, and perhaps it might be in the caption below, Blue Canary Africa on Instagram. That's where a lot of our work is as well, branding as well as ads, uh, still graphics, um, animations, and video work is all there. And Facebook, Blue Canary Africa as well. And do I need to include my email? Uh, if you want to, sure. <laughs> Alban at bluecanary.co.cw or you could say hello at hello at bluecanary.co.zw Hi. Thank you so much, Alvin. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning into the show. Be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. That's a wrap.